so I, I'll tell you, I really have been uh, seeking the Lord and struggling with, uh, with the messages that the Lord would have me to preach. And I, I believe that this morning, uh, Tab said we've been praying for you to preach from the overflow. Well, I promise you it'll be this morning uh, from the overflow uh, with God's help. Uh, if you have your Bible with you today, I want to preach a message uh, from Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, uh, verse 36. One verse, Acts chapter 13. Verse 36, I believe before we can talk about the, uh, the purpose of the church, we need to talk about your purpose and my purpose. We need to figure out what we're here for. We need to figure out uh, what God wants to do with us. And we need to get rid of what we want to do with ourselves. Amen? And so this morning, Acts chapter 13, verse 36 there the Bible says, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was buried with his fathers and, and saw corruption. Now, uh, some of the other translations say that David, after he had fulfilled God's purpose in his own generation, fell asleep. You know, when I was uh, growing up, I grew up in a Christian family. Uh, my mom and dad were deeply devoted followers of Jesus Christ. But when I got, like a lot of people, when I got to be about 13 to 14 years old, I decided I wanted to kind of do my own thing. And I'd find excuses not to, to be in church. I'd find excuses to be doing what I wanted to do on Sunday morning instead of what God wanted for my life. And uh, I was really trying to find my reason for being. I was searching for it with all my heart. You might say I was searching for my purpose. Uh, I remember as a kid growing up, I used to watch on television. There wasn't a whole lot to choose from, young people, and you probably don't even remember this, but there was a show on television called, uh, it, the, first of all, it started out as the $10,000 pyramid. $10,000 was a heap of money back in those days. And then it went to the $25,000 pyramid, and I believe before it went off the air, it was the $100,000 pyramid. Uh, it, isn't it amazing how uh, money tends to inflate over time and, and I remember Dick Clark was the host of that show and uh, as I was thinking about uh, my purpose as I was thinking about preparing to uh, point out your purpose in, in God's kingdom I thought about uh, that game and when it uh, when they were trying to win the big money you'll you remember they went in the winner's circle they had this little ring there and there were two chairs uh, behind the the person that was uh, that was receiving the clues there would be the uh, the pyramid with the, the answers would be up there and there was one person that was looking toward the pyramid and when the, the answers would turn around, he would give clues to that individual. And, and I was wondering the other day, I was thinking, what if it was the, what is something with a purpose? What if that was the, the answer? Something with a purpose. How, if you were the one giving the clues, how would you say that? And, and I thought about uh, several different items that have a, a certain purpose. Uh, I thought about an oil filter wrench. You know, oil filter wrench can't do but one thing. I guess you could put it on somebody's arm and cut off the circulation, but primarily it's for the purpose of taking off an oil filter. I thought about an old can opener. You know, you can't do a whole lot with a can opener except take the cap off of a bottle that we hardly ever use anymore. Uh, and, and, and I got my wife involved. I said, you know, if that was the clue, what would you do? And it's very difficult to come up with a clue for something with a purpose. And yet the most important thing that you'll ever come to understand about your life is that you were created with a purpose. I, I remember as that young person coming up in, 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 in a Christian home and watching my mom and my dad and seeing the difference that Christ made in their life and yet not fully understanding that that is what I needed in my own life. I, I remember... Uh, Launching out, and as I got later into my teenage years, I would seek uh, to find my purpose in all types of different things. I thought maybe my purpose could be found in making money. 
I thought maybe my purpose could be found in relationships. I thought maybe my purpose could be found in uh, outdoor activities. I thought maybe my purpose could be found in a number, a myriad of different things. But you know what I found out? I didn't really know what my purpose was. Here I was, I had this burning desire on the inside to know what I was here for, what my purpose is, and yet I, I found that when all was said and done, I still had a great emptiness in my life. Y'all ever been there? I, I remember uh, when I was in my early 20s, I, I, it all came to a head, and I remember I became a very depressed man. Uh, I became depressed to the point that I didn't want to live anymore. Uh, and I remember talking with people. They would ask me, they'd say, why in the world are, are you so down? What, why are you so desperate? Why are you despairing? What's wrong in your life? And the only thing I could tell them, I don't know why I'm here. I don't seem to have a purpose for living. And as a Christian minister, I've, I've found time and time again that people will come, in to, come to me and they'll say, Brother Jeff, I just need to know what my purpose is for living. I just want to know why I'm on this planet. You see, people have been created for a purpose. And until they find out what that purpose is, there's a vast emptiness in their soul. There is a lack of fulfillment in their life. And this morning, if you are trying to fill that purpose with anything else but God's purpose, uh, you're just where I was. Maybe you're not at the point that you want to die. But friend, you are at a point that you're struggling. You're at a point that you're spinning out of control. And until you come into alignment with God's purpose for your life, you're going to remain there. And when you're there, listen to me. Y'all listen to this, amen. When you're in that place, you don't have any joy. You, you don't have any peace in your life. You certainly don't have any fulfillment. Now this morning, I want us to understand, first of all, what our individual purpose is. And then I want to move on to the, the purpose of the church because, as you'll find, they are basically one in the same. I believe God has created us for relationship. I don't believe He created any one of us to be a hermit. I don't believe He created any one of us to live without a relationship with other people. Even within the Godhead, there's relationship. There's relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and, and there's the relationship in, in heaven between the, the Trinity and, and with the created beings, that is the angels in glory. There's wonderful fellowship there in heaven. But God in His great uh, delight decided that He would create man not because He needed us, but because He found joy in creating us. And so He made mankind. And God desires a relationship with mankind. And so here we are, these people with free will, these people who can choose to uh, 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 invite God into their life or they can choose to reject God. And all the while, God wants us to find fulfillment in Him. All the while, God wants us to get in line with His direction, His will, hey, His purpose for our life. Uh, I, re I remember being at Florida Baptist Theological College uh, after I had uh, uh, been called into the ministry. Got saved at 24 years of age and it was within a year of that that God began dealing with me about uh, coming to, uh, uh, to follow Him in, in Christian vocational ministry. And, and that call was very real. As a matter of fact, it was the, the loudest that I've ever heard God call in. It's the, the strongest that I've ever felt His draw in my life. And, and I remember when I surrendered to that, I was taking a pastoral ministries class and we had a professor by the name of Dr. David Haney. And I remember Dr. Haney had one of those Bob Hope noses. How many of you remember the nose on Bob Hope? Had it all look like a ski slope. Come down and went out like that on the end. And Dr. Haney had a nose like that and he always wore his glasses right there. Right out on the tip of his nose. And I can still remember to this day uh, him giving uh, the purpose of the church. Now, I could go ahead and give you the purpose of the church. We can all go home and I won't have any more messages to preach. No, I'm just kidding. Because you know preachers got to get in his due. 
But I remember him uh, standing there before us and time and time again he would repeat this over and over. He always told us, he said, the purpose of the church. If y'all listening, this is important. He said the purpose of the church is to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ in order to establish the reign and the rule of Christ in the hearts and lives of men, women, boys, and girls. Did you get that? Because it's truly important. The ministry of the church, the purpose of the church, is to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ, what Jesus did while he was walking on this earth, and he's gone on to glory, and he, he's entrusted carrying on that ministry in his people, in the church, to continue the ministry of Jesus in order to establish the reign, that is, that God comes in and He reigns supremely over our human heart. But more than that, He establishes His rule over our life. That extends into the way that we live our life. That extends into what we do in our life. Everything we think, say, or do is under the rule of Jesus Christ. He does more than rule, reign over our emotions. He rules over our life. And he does that for what reason? So that he can establish that rule, that reign, in the hearts and lives. There's a difference there. Heart represents the emotion. And yet, the life represents the way we go out and walk each day. The walk represents the way we go out and live our life each day. Of who? Men, women, boys, and girls. In other words, that's the desire that God has for his church. But even more so is his desire for every individual person, for every individual believer. I, I remember coming to understand that as an individual, that it's not about what I want for my life, not about my dreams, goals, not about my plans, not about my perceived purposes, but it's all about God's purpose for my life. Now I want you to look back in the text that we have for this morning. I want you to look at a, a very obscure scripture. One that doesn't seem to have any great meaning other than for historical purposes. We find it to be the close of the life. The last words about David, if you will. And it says, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep. David, after he had served God's purpose in his generation, died. That's what it means. And basically every one of us is going to come to that point, uh, that point where, the, where someone, the obituary in the paper, the people that love us the most, the people uh, that talk about us for years to come, they'll tell us, tell us the little eulogy about our life and then they'll say, when he got through living, when he had served either his purpose or God's purpose, hey, he died. And the Bible gives us two very important details here about David's life that are also true about your individual life and also on the greater level, the corporate level, about the life of the church. Now I want you to catch them if you will again. First of all, David, after he had first served God's purpose. He had served God's purpose. Not his purpose. Matter of fact, when we find David serving his purpose, we see David getting in a whole lot of trouble, don't we? And what about my life and your life? I know you don't know anything about me other than what Tab's told you or if you've seen me here preaching before, you know very little about my life. But when I do things according to my purposes, I mess up big time. Whenever I try to do things that I purpose or desire or will for my own life, they're not going to amount for, to anything that's going to count for eternity. But whenever I align myself, as David did, to carry out God's purpose, then great things could be done. I want you to know that what is God's purpose before we move on? What is God's purpose? Have you ever thought about it? If you had to factor it down to its least common denominator, what is the purpose of God? I mean, why is it that He deals with us? What is it that He wants from me as an individual? And what is it that He desires from you as an individual? What is His purpose? Well, He's a God of relationship. And He's a God of reconciliation. Now listen very carefully. God desired that you and I would be brought back into a relationship with Him. 
God desired that we would be reconciled with Him. God desired that we would be brought out of the family of darkness into the kingdom of light. That's His desire. And, and in David's life, he used David to promote his will in his kingdom. And he, he used David to promote relationship among the people of Israel. He even gave a portrait uh, that the reign uh, of God would continue through the line of David, that eventually a Messiah would come, and he would ultimately bring reconciliation, not only between Israel and God, but especially between Israel and the Gentiles. Even the Gentiles would be afforded an opportunity to come into relationship with God. If you're happy about that this morning, you ought to say amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. God, aren't you? And the only way that that happens is when God brings us into relationship. Now, I believe it's the, one of the catechisms that says that we were created to, in, uh, to, 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 to love God and to enjoy Him forever. Created for relationship with God. Now, God has created you with a specific purpose. He has created you to not only come to know Him in that close personal relationship. Remember, it's not religion, is it? It's relationship. He wants a relationship with you, uh, brother. He wants relationship with you, sister. He wants you to commune with Him. He wants you to have an even better relationship than Adam enjoyed. The Bible says Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. Friends, I hadn't got to wait for the cool of the day to walk with God. I enjoy communion with Him at all times of the day. If you got up this morning and you didn't get enter into relationship with God in prayer, it's your own fault because he's there all the time waiting for you to enter into relationship with him he's there all the time wanting to walk with you he wants to walk with you in the good times of life and hey he wants to walk with you through the struggles of life he desires, His purpose is that there would be relationship not only between you and Him but so that you might have relationship with all men. He wants you to carry that message of grace that you've experienced in your own life and He wants you to share it with other people. He wants you to know Him and He wants you to make Him known. About two years ago, I had the privilege of, of, of meeting a young man. I say he's a young man. He's younger than I am. Uh, he's, I got about 15 years on him. And uh, he and I struck a, a relationship up that was based upon one of my favorite things. That's hunting. And uh, I knew that he and his family didn't go to church. And so uh, I, I began to, to, to build a relationship with him. And I remember one day we were coming home from hunting and we're in my truck. And he asked me, he said, Jeff, why is it important that uh, I become a part of a church? And oh, he opened a can of worms tab when he, when he, when he, when he asked that question. And I, I told him, I said, well, Jason, I want you to understand, brother, that first of all, you have to come uh, into a, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've got to understand what His purpose is for you. But once you understand what His purpose is for you, you'll understand that you can't do it apart from the church. God never intended for you and me to be alone. God never intended that His work be carried out by you and you alone. He intended that you and I join together to carry out His work. If we're going to reach a lost world for, for God and for good, the only way we're going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, is by joining our lives together. We've already been baptized into the Beloved. He's already put us into the family of God. But in the same way, in the very real way, you and I need to come together as the, the local church, as the local body of believers, and we need to work side by side to achieve God's purpose. What is that? To bring people into relationship with Him. So what's your purpose? Your ultimate purpose is to know God and make Him known. What is the purpose of the church? The purpose of the church is to know God and to make Him known. 
Now, there's much more to it than that. Basically, there are uh, about five things that the church uh, functions in. These would be the, uh, the areas of, uh, of our corporate life as the church that we reach out uh, and, and carry the love of Christ to other people. I'm going to be preaching to some degree on these things. Tonight we're going to talk about authentic worship because I believe there's a lot of worship going on that's not authentic. Are y'all all right? And so we're going to be looking at worship. We're going to be looking at evangelism. We're going to be looking at discipleship. We're going to be looking at fellowship. And we're going to be looking at ministry. All of these are a part of being able to carry out the purpose of, the, of your individual life, or the, God's purpose for your individual life, and the purpose of the church. Now, when I was, uh, had been saved for a couple of years and had answered the call to ministry... Uh, my pastor at that time, John Enfinger, uh, John said, Jeff, I want you to, to cut back on your course load at school and I want you to begin to work uh, at the church. Uh, spend a few hours every week working for me in the church. And so I said, well, John, what will I been, uh, be doing? He said, well, you just agree to come on and we'll come up with, your, with, with, with the title that we have for you, what you'll be doing. And about a week later, the church voted, and uh, you know what my title was? Jeff Hines, Minister of Discipleship, Fellowship, and Ministry Development. You're talking about a, a, a big title. And I didn't fully understand what all that was, but friends, when you factor it down, uh, my whole task was about building relationships with people. Not only within the community of faith, but I was about the business of building relationships with people outside the church, reaching out to them with the love of God so that they might come to know Him as Lord and Savior. And those are, are, are part of what it means to be the family of God. That's a part of what it means to be the church, is that we reach out to people outside the church. You see, it's more than the people inside of this building. It's more than the walls of this church. It's about going forth, carrying out the ministry of Jesus Christ to establish the reign and the rule of God in the hearts and the lives of men, women, boys, and girls. Nothing brings greater joy to my life than seeing people come to faith in Jesus Christ, seeing them find out what God's purpose is for their life. Uh, you know, once you find out what God's purpose is for your life, there's no limit to what you can do for Him. Once you find out what God's purpose is, you've got a reason for being here. And you're willing to do whatever it takes to, to, feel, to fulfill God's purpose. The Bible says that David, when he had fulfilled God's purpose, died. Now friends, if you were to die today, would you be able to stand before God and say, Yes, Lord, I have fulfilled your purpose. Yes, Lord, I've done what you desired with my life. Yes, Lord, I found out what your purpose for me was and I carried it out in my life. Now, your roles may be different. You may be a school teacher. You may work in a factory. You may be a grandfather. You may be a grandmother. You may be a housewife. I, I don't know what your role is in life, but whatever your role is, your role is just a way that you can carry out the purpose of God in your life. That friend of mine that asked about the purpose of the church, he carries it out in his work. He, he, he works in, in city government and there as he's over a, a bunch of different guys, he's came to understand that God has a purpose for his life and he wants him to reach out with the love of Christ, the ministry of reconciliation to the people that are under his leadership. And he does a fine job of that as he takes the roads and the inlets that God has given him to carry out the love of Jesus Christ for the people around him. See, that's what it's all about. When you find out your purpose, then you plug it into wherever God has placed you in life and you are able to enact the purpose of God for your life. Are we carrying out God's purpose for our life? But that's not all that the Bible says about David. 
That's not all that it has to say about him. It says that he carried out that purpose. He fulfilled the will of God in his own generation. He fulfilled it in his own generation. Now, you and I are here for a time. Nobody's really certain how long we'll be here on earth, but we have an allotted amount of time. I'm so glad that God told me uh, not when I would die, but simply that I would die. So I don't know when it's coming, and you don't either. So we need to live every day like it might be our last day because we're really essentially on a timetable. Are y'all all right? We don't know how much time we've got, but we need to live every day like it's the last day that we have. And we need to carry that message, that purpose that God has out in our own generation. The Bible says that we need to redeem the time that we've been given. That we may need to make the most of every opportunity that we have because we may not have any more opportunities. And here we see David. David, how did he fulfill God's purpose in his generation? Well, God took him from being a simple shepherd boy to, to, and gave him the opportunity to, do, to defeat a great nemesis called Goliath. He, he took him from there and he had him to, to be a, a, a servant in the court of Saul. He even allowed for David to spend time fleeing from Saul in the wilderness. He eventually elevated David to the position of king over Israel. And during David's generation, for the most part, David was a man after God's own heart. David had a certain amount of time to carry out the purpose of God and he had to do it in his generation. Now the way that David carried out his purpose in his generation won't work in our generation. We need to understand that God's purpose is unchanging. God's purpose is eternal. God's purpose is lasting. God's purpose is written in stone. But when it comes to doing it within my generation, the time that I've been given, that's not written in stone. That can be uh, shaped. I can carry the unchanging truth in an ever-changing way. How many of you remember when you had to go out to the well and drop a bucket down and draw water? We got anybody in there? We got a couple in here that had to do it that way. I never had to do that, praise God. Some of you remember having to go out and drop a bucket down to draw water. And some of you remember going out and, and y'all remember doing this? A pump? I see heads going up and down. You, you remember drawing water from a pump. But that's completely foreign to my, my kids. My kids go up and they turn the handle and it, they want water to come out when they turn the handle. Uh, they expect it to, to come forth. And the point is that over the generations, the water has not changed. It's the same water that we've always drank. It's not changed. But friends, the way that we get the water, the way that we bring forth the water is ever changing. Who knows the way that we'll get water in the future? But right now, the way we do it is we turn on the faucet and the water comes forth. What I'm saying is that God has uniquely purposed and gifted you to carry the unchanging message of reconciliation in the way that you and you alone can do it. Some of you are very quiet by nature, but you are one of those individuals that will do anything for anybody. And God will use you in your quiet nature to carry out His perfect purpose in your generation. Some of us are just loudmouths by nature. And God will use us to loudly herald the Word of God everywhere that we go. Some people operate uh, in, a, in, in, a, in, in the area of mercantile. They run a store. They work in a store. And that's a unique opportunity to carry the gospel to somebody who hasn't heard. Uh, I love opportunities to think outside the box when carrying the gospel. After all, doesn't the Bible say that what, say whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, you do it for the glory of God? That's everything that you do in life. And so if you're out there playing church league softball, 
You're doing it for the glory of God and you use it as a tool, as a method to carry the unchanging purpose of Jesus Christ to the people around you. If you're out there fishing, carry somebody with you. Use it as an opportunity to carry the unchanging message of Jesus Christ to somebody that desperately needs to know their purpose in life. We take the unchanging message and we use it in the way that is pertinent to our generation and we reach people and bring them into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that David fulfilled God's purpose. And then he did it in his generation. And then he died. Now those are stark words, aren't they? I did a funeral Thursday. For a dear lady, she lived 97 years. 97 years old. You know when she got saved? When she was 96 years old. She grew up in a Roman Catholic background. She was an Italian lady, moved, uh, immigrated to the United States uh, when she was very young and was involved in Roman Catholicism. She was uh, caught up in the things like the, the, the rosary and lighting candles, you know, for those who had died and all types of uh, things that are foreign to you and me that have grown up in the Baptist faith. This lady, uh, for some time ago, uh, 20 or 30 years ago, she had actually uh, joined a Baptist church. She uh, had made a profession of faith. And... Still, she struggled with watching the Mass on television. She struggled with using the rosary. She struggled with praying to Mary. And, and all of that while, she was afraid, she was scared to death of what it says that happened to David. That he came to the end of his life, and what happened? He died. The Bible says, the point unto man wants to what? Die. And then the judgment. This lady, the older she got, and the more her health de departed from her, the more she cried out to Mary, the more she used the rosary, the more she depended upon the Mass. And there was no hope for her. She'd pick up the Bible, and she couldn't find any solace from the Scriptures. She couldn't understand what the Bible had to say. And, and here she was, this lady that was caught in limbo, torn between two fates, torn between one that didn't give her any hope, and, and yet not able to fully receive one that offered the only hope, the only purpose that she needed for life. And yet when she was 96 years old, God opened her heart. And she understood that there is no hope for her praying through Mary. No hope for her looking to any of the departed saints. No hope to her depending on the rosary. No hope for her looking to the mass. No hope for her if someone lights candles on her behalf. No hope for her except through Jesus Christ. And at 96 years of age, 96 years young, she cried out to Jesus Christ and He came into her life. And friends, you're talking about a change in her life. You know, the Bible says that when a person's born again, there'll be a change. Amen? Because you're a new creation after all. The old is gone and the new has come. And in that uh, little over a year that she lived by faith in Jesus Christ, there was an absolute change in her life. No longer was she selfish, telling people what they needed to do for her. But it was all about the people that would come to visit her. It was all about what she could do for them. It was all about them being elevated and uplifted. Her life had changed. She had found out that God had a purpose for her. Then and only then was she ready to die. Last week, her health started severely declining. Many times she had been pretty low and she'd always managed to pull out. But not this time. Her daughter went home from the nursing home and uh, she fully expected that her mom would be better in the morning. But the next morning as she was getting ready to go back to the nursing home, she got the phone call that her mama had slipped off into eternity in the early morning hours. 
She said, my first reaction was to hang up the phone and smile. She said, my first reaction was to thank God with an endearing gratitude for saving my mama at 96 years of age. And at 97, she slipped off into eternity in the arms of her Savior as if she had received Him if she, when she were a little child. He received her, even at such an old age. He received her unto Himself. She finally, after 96 years, discovered her purpose. What about you, brother? What about you, sister? Have you found that purpose that God has for your life? Are you ready to die? If it were today, would you be willing to say, I'm ready to go into eternity. I'm ready to meet my Savior. Or, are you scared to death to die? Are you scared to slip off into eternity? Are you afraid of what might be awaiting you out there in the great beyond? Friend, in order for you to have peace and joy in facing death, you need to have peace and joy in facing life. And the only way that you and I will ever be fulfilled is first of all by knowing the purpose of God that He has for you as an individual and as a church. And secondly, knowing the purpose of God for your, for, to carry it out in the, in the church and being a, carrying it out in your generation in the way that He desires. God has placed you where you are. It's part of His purpose. But you've got a message that rings through eternity. It's a message about a loving Savior. You see, I would have been lost and undone. And for that fact, any person that ever died throughout the human ages... That person be lost and undone were it not for Jesus Christ. God, in His great love for man, gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, perfect, sinless. Came down, lived the life of a man for 33 years, taking on the robe of flesh, walking in, in like us, but also unlike us, in that He was without sin. Going to Calvary's cross, nobody nailed him there. He laid his life freely down on Calvary's cross because he loves you and me. And there when he was nailed to that cross, God placed upon him my sin and yours. And when Jesus died, he paid the price for my sin and yours. And I'm so happy to say this morning that the, the, the same Jesus that they placed in a tomb three days later came forth alive from that tomb and He's now seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that He's our high priest. He makes intercession on our behalf. This morning, maybe He's interceding for somebody here. Maybe He's interceding for somebody here that doesn't yet know His purpose for their life because they're still carrying out their own purpose for living. They're still trying to be the captain of their own soul. And this morning, Jesus is calling your attention towards Calvary. If anything ever screamed love in all eternity throughout the portals of history, the cross screamed out love. And this morning, if you listen with the, with the ear of your heart, you'll be able to hear the message of love ringing down through the Christian centuries, ringing down through from the cross to you. And this morning, if you'd be willing to say yes to Jesus Christ, believing that He died for your behalf on Calvary's cross, raised victoriously over death, hell, and the grave, if you'd ask that same Jesus into your life, He'll give you a new start. He'll give you a reason for being. He'll give you a purpose in this life. Do you know what He's going to do with you? He's going to take you and not only give you the promise of eternal life when you do as David did in life and death. A friend, He's going to give you purpose in this life. He's going to give you what the Bible refers to as abundant life. You say, my life is anything but abundant, Brother Jeff. You just need to discover your purpose. You need to discover your reason for being and then He's going to put you in the greatest family of all. You say, I already got a family. 
Well, you don't understand what family is until you got a family that you become a part of by nature of the new birth. When you become a family known as God's family, when you become a part of that family, then you can truly rejoice because you are a, 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 a body on mission. It's more than about you. It's more than about your church. It's about all those people outside the walls of this church this morning, not only in our Jerusalem, not only in our Judea, but we need to understand that to the very uttermost parts of the world, we're to carry that message, that purpose, that never-changing message that Jesus saves to the ends of the earth. While we still have time, we need to do it. God's purpose in our generation. And when we've done it, we can lay our heads down on our deathbed and we can slip off into eternity knowing that Jesus is pleased with us.